next step is going to be to get the hides together that I'm going to put on the bottom of these skis. Uh, this summer I had a successful elk hunt, so I got some elk shin hides. We used the, the hide off of the shin here, which is called a kamus in Russian, and the hair is more durable there than it would be if you used the back or something like that. So this is the these are the ideal hides to use. I, I shot these, got this elk with my bow in September up in the wilderness. And while I was there, I smoked the hides and then of course I since scraped them um, in preparation for making some skis. Uh, you can use, I often use moose shin skins or, you know, elk or even horse and you could even use cow. The cow's got, you know, thicker skin so you're carrying more weight but they all work. Uh, see, in Russia they use horse uh, quite often and they'll actually even use the back of a horse um, if you don't have enough shin hides. I think shin's the best, but it's not the only thing that you can use. Um, because I want to make another pair of skis, I want to try to economize on my uh, shin hides here, so I'm not going to fully cover the skis. You'll actually get pretty good grip even with uh, either with a fur strip down the middle or just uh, this much fur. You don't absolutely need to cover the whole thing. That's ideal if you have the fur. Um, so I'm going to just kind of lay out how I'm going to how I'm going to put these on. We'll end up roughly going Roughly going like this. Um, and then I have this goat hide lying around. And I was just going to show you how they would, if you were to use a back hide as opposed to the shin hide, which I might do. I might just piece some in here in the middle just to give myself more coverage. Uh, if you're going to do that, well, you do see how you got the, see how the hide has the, direction of the fur. When you cut out your strips of fur, you want to follow the direction. So you're not going to cut a straight strip like this. We're going to try to follow the direction of the fur. And then when you wet that hide, it'll stretch into shape. Um, here, I'm going to try using this, this halfway tanned hide from a goat. And I'm trying to figure out how I can get two decent sections out. So the fur's coming down. You might be able to go like this and then one like this. So let's try that. See what that gives us as far as coverage. So next I'm just going to get the hides and uh, soak them in some water, just plain water for uh, a few days until they uh, get pliable again and I can stretch them onto the bottom of the skis. down in there. And I might come occasionally and stir that up. Make sure they're, you know, once or twice a day. Just shuffle them around in there. Stick them in there for three days. We'll wait and see if we got some more pliability in them. All right, my friends. So what we have here are my skis. Um, I wish I had more hides. There's a bit of a dearth of of hides around here right now. I got those two elk, so eight shin skins off of them. 
However, I want to save more, save half of those for another pair of shoes I'm going to make. So on this one, this pair, my experimentation continues from from using dry cedar to now uh, epoxying these this uh, fabric on to help strengthen to now the hide process. But what we do do is you see. Yesterday I laid out what hides I had. Boom, boom, boom. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing, even a, even a partial cover in the hides will, will give you the effect you want. The more the merrier, of course. But here, what you want to use, you know, you don't want to use tanned hides because you want at this point, after they've soaked for a few days, you want to have them be able to stretch a little bit so you can kind of stretch it and put it, you know, get it nice and tight on the hides. Then put it, we'll put it back in the, uh, in the form for them to dry so they don't bend up your skis. Uh, that said, like I said, I'm short on hides. So what I'm trying is this goat hide I had. This is just regular goat hide. You saw me cut it out. I'm going to try to attach it here uh, and see how it works. The hair is generally in the right direction because, because it's uh, a little bit longer and there are some waves this way and that way. Uh, it might cause a bit of a break-in period on the skis where it takes a while to get those hairs to uh, form all towards the back. That said, they're pretty well formed. You can see that I sewed these together. It shows up well with the different color hides in somewhat of a chevron pattern here. So when you're skiing, uh, you know, I've seen people do it with just straight lines and pieces together. I don't think it'll make a huge difference, but this is how I was shown, and this is probably the best way to do it, is to chevron it together like that. Um, many ways to skin a cat. This is how I'm skinning this cat. On the front here, a lot of times they'll do different things on the noses you'll see. Sometimes the nose will get thin here and they'll pull the hide up like this and tie it around and you can you know, have some string right there. I can show you some pictures of my other pair of skis. I'm gonna just wrap mine up and over and staple or nail it down with small nails. I've already kind of laid this out yesterday and generally it'll look like that. I'll probably do a little trimming up here to even it out. So there'll be some wood exposed under here, you know, in these places, but it, it'll still work well. So here's my first skin. So I'll move this out of the way. And now I've got a piece together, hide number two. Uh, Probably start with this bad boy up on the nose. I want it to go all the way to the top of the nose so that if you, you know, if you started to hide somewhere here, it would be snagging on things as you went. So this should cover up all around the bend in the nose. Boom, and then here we go. I gotta look at these. This is. I think it'll wear in. Like I said, this is a, I had kind of tanned this hide. I never finished it, but it was somewhat tanned. So there's not a lot of stretch, which is annoying, but we'll do what I can do. I'll probably end up, this will just be a short piece here, I think. So I'll attach that to, you know, see how I got all this ruffled spot here. Probably end up cutting it off around here. Attach that on there, and this on here. Something like that is probably what we'll end up like. Alright, so I got them laid out roughly where I want them. And I'm going to start with my first hide here. Piece of goat hide. Basically, I'm going to cut my chevron in it. As it 
lathe. This one's almost already got that form, but I'll just trim it up here to technically be cut under the uh, hair. Save it, but let's see. Like so. Line them up. Pretty good. So, let's see if I can sew this without pre drilling the holes. I don't have an awl on me, so I got my drill in case I need to put some holes in it ahead of time. <laughs> Maybe not primitive approved but it'll work oh could use a thimble also oh, I might get it this is the toughest part of the hide oh. mm -hmm. Tie a knot in the end of your string. And we'll sew this up. Make sure.